warm greetings and good evening from chennai center for china studies this is our padmesh chari research officer at c3s today in a conversation with colonel r hariharan sir distinguished member of c3s and retired strategic analyst of intelligence corps today we are in an interview with colonel r hariharan sir on the topic amphibious warfare we welcome you sir today myself and along with the audience who are watching this interview we are looking forward to get an insight on amphibious warfare so ever since the ever since the ukraine crisis had started there have been talks about amphibious warfare so what is the aspect which makes it so different and unique from rest of the military warfare you you see for each world war 1 that tank was tested machine gun was established world war 2 saw the nuclear weapons and rocket weapons and then subsequent wars saw the cold war period various developments now we are in the knowledge era and uh, now the warfare has changed but okay. things that remain constant is yes. navy has an indispensable role yes that is for nuclear deterrence hmm. because the through the sea use of the sea for nuclear deterrence okay then the amphibious operations without navy you cannot do it that is as okay. simple as that okay okay sir so so in if you see the map of uh, the ukraine southern yes. coast has got two seas black sea and sea of azov which provide yes. uh, entry for uh, europe for russians throughout the year otherwise there is russians have no access okay to rest of europe so okay. it becomes vital the southern coast that is why in 2014 russia uh, ensured that crimea which is the southern most part which has got predominantly russian speaking yes. people hmm. joins russia okay so the it becomes very important part of ukraine uh, any warfare against ukraine i will not go into ukraine warfare today because that is a subject by itself but if you see the map the ukraine is on the western side it is surrounded by uh, poland hungary romania and moldova and one portion of moldova transnistria which is bordering ukraine has declared itself an independent republic and russian troops are there because it's russian speaking it's a small strip part of moldova so uh, when the russian fleet russian sent three fleets the black sea fleet and uh, to to more i will not go into that uh, uh, disposition there but they showed as though they are going to land troops so that they take firm hold of the coast okay because the russians have brought amphibious ships one fleet of amphibious ships and uh, two fleets of uh, conventional warships so it it becomes a tool for strategically deceiving they didn't immediately launch operation 
they carried out bombardment they the ukrainians pulled their troops to protect the coast and they struck from the north and east and northeast this is how russians carried out the operation so it is used as uh, you see in uh, naval warfare you deny the sea for the enemy's use and you control the sea they say anti denial and anti control this is what navy primarily does so amphibious warfare becomes very crucial when you carry out the your blue water naval operation this is the broad format yeah oh yes sir uh, yeah you have uh, you have broken thanks for breaking it up to us uh, so sir like so my next question to you is so nowadays defense strategists they they talk about several modern warfare and that are that are carried out using um, advanced munitions and how much relevance do you think the amphibious warfare holds under this uh, under this modern warfare tactics firstly I, i i think i told you which it is not modern warfare is not tactics yes sir sorry yeah. you, must, you must be very careful about the use of the word tactics and strategy yes sir. modern warfare is about strategy okay strategy is to achieve yeah overall a uh, national aim whereas tactics is to achieve a local objective through a military operation or any operation it is like making a spare part no one is making a spare part and other is making a automobile you make the spare part like a tactic and you fit it in the overall you adopt a strategy to fit it in in what you want to achieve that is manufacture of a car this is how i would put it in layman's language so uh, if you reframe your question i will be thankful yeah sure so so, so basically uh, basically uh, you know nowadays uh, different strategists they speak a lot about modern warfare correct and warfare is that are carried out using advanced munitions in the in, in in the current world scenario like uh, like how we have mentioned about like the difference between warfare and tactics and also like how how we speak about modern warfare how much relevance does amphibious warfare holds uh, amphibious warfare has also undergone changes earlier i told you the warfare is changing warfare has become hybrid hybrid means it is more than conventional or fair carried out by armies it will be used the internet will be used satellites will be used for advancing your uh, strategy so propaganda will be used and actually this is in the uh, ukraine warfare is very good example how the world is conditioned by western propaganda you hardly see any russian Uh, if you see the uh, the news on ukraine in all our tv channels and media you will think already the russians have been defeated ukraine has won the war which is contrary to the fact russians have advanced from the north they have uh, come to near the, on the doors of the capital from the east they have come to the doors of the capital the donbas region already they have on the east of the russian speaking people and the most advanced area of ukraine they have already they are controlling the southern coast also short of odessa that is on the western most half they are already they have got a foothold so but the, the this is what is hybrid warfare 
So, and there is sanctioned regime also. That is, there is a legal aspect. You bring, these are all other than warfare. Previously, now together they are used. Uh, that is why it is called hybrid warfare. Now they are going, uh, making moves in the UN Security Council. UN General Assembly passes a resolution. So the international legal instruments are being used to pressurize, to bring, to achieve your strategic aim. This is what is uh, uh, the hybrid warfare. In this, previously amphibious warfare used to be an important segment. Even now it is an important segment. But you adopt means rather than landing troops by ships, you can airlift by helicopter. And it will be protected rather than crossing because it will be the sea coast enemy is expecting you. And he will definitely attack you. So, you have gunships, helicopter gunships, which can launch missiles. You've got drones, which can carry out remote firing from your control room. In Chennai, you can carry out operation. Imagine, that kind of ability is there. So, the people, a country like Japan, these are all island countries, Japan, uh, Korea also part of it, and uh, other Sri Lanka. These countries, they, it would be futile for them to defend their coast all, all over. So they would rather repel any operation before amphibious operation takes place. So Japan has got not aircraft carriers but helicopter carriers because it can take on the force because part of the nuclear deterrence requires for sea operations carrier uh, operation also. Third is the amphibious operation. First is nuclear deterrence. Third is, now it is called littoral warfare, amphibious warfare. This is the uh, Western usage. Our Navy is also using now. There were, uh, we have uh, two sh littoral ship dock, they call it. The dock can land fighters or uh, then ships that's used. So the for the warfare, the force levels will also change based on your strategic objective. So Japan has got a, a brigade that has got Japan and Australia. They use conventional uh, troops. Americans use Americans and. Uh, uh, Royal Navy use uh, Marines because Americans have global objectives. For global operation, they want a self-contained force. So it is carrier, uh, the fleet, let us say the each command, if you, it is what this self-contained force. It has got submarine launch ballistic missiles, submarines, uh, hunter killer submarines, which will provide a call. And the carrier will be protected. And the carrier also will pro provide protection because it is carries missiles and uh, fighters so that they carry out operation. So, amphibious operation qualitatively might change from country to country, 
based on their uh, strategic requirement. But it will be very much part of it. So they might land ships to, if you see the, the type of strategic operations, uh, to uh, look at it, they carry out first is assault landing. That is, you might, might I don't know whether you have seen the movie called Longest Day. It is on yes. the Allied landing. How they, uh, in Second World War, the Allies landed in France. So you see the amphibious landings. With, uh, they use what is called ducks, which can float. And uh, they are attracted also, or wheeled. they will go on shore. And they will be, they will overcome shore obstacles. So engineer element will go. All this now are based on specific requirements. In Second World War, they used the, the troops to land not only by coast, they used the gliders also in large part of the inv invasion force. They use gliders. Now, of course, it is not. But you have real-time intelligence for this by uh, having ships uh, carrying uh, correction, by uh, having drones carrying out real-time surveillance. It will be so that like we see each other on a screen, the, we will be seeing the battleground directly. So command and control becomes very important. The, the reaction time is, has to be very fast. That is why they have, you know, the China has been carrying out what is called informatized warfare. It is getting ready for that. Informatization. That is, Modern warfare can be carried out by command for C, C4S, R and I, they call it. Command, control, computers, and the surveillance, reconnaissance. In addition to surveillance, just before assaulting, you will have to carry out reconnaissance and information and intelligence. That is how it is. So any operation has to do this so that you are not surprised. The Russians actually, they lost one ship. No, I, earlier I mentioned uh, one uh, landing ship docked, they lost. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Maria Pole Coast. Why? Because the Ukrainians were using uh, land-based missiles mounted on trucks and they knocked it off. And same thing they did for probably, I don't know, it is anybody's guess. I think we have been, our commodores have been debating on this, how the Moscow flagship yes, was knocked off. So, this is how it is being done. Yeah. Tell me. So, yes, sir. You have given us a very detailed explanation. And I believe you have also touched upon my rest of my two questions. So, anyways, I'll, I'll bring it up Doesn't to you, sir. You, you asked that. I'll, uh, sure, sir. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, sir, uh, let's talk about the Indo-Pacific region a little bit. Uh, this region has a vast coastline and off late, this region has been increasingly militarized. Will amphibious warfare play a crucial role in this region? It, uh, actually, uh, well, Chinese Navy is the biggest Navy in the world. I think it is uh, 2020, it surpassed US Navy, which is the world's biggest thing. I think if I remember correct, US Navy has 
255 uh, units ships and uh, the chinese have 300 ships why it is different which are the focus areas they have developed uh, six brigades of amphibious brigades in three armies each along the coast from north to south they are uh, poised the three armies uh, the, the armies in our uh, parlance would be uh, something like our core or in Russian case it's field armies so they have these six brigades the the six brigades have got two types of uh, modern landing ship docks which have been developed specifically I think for uh, taking Taiwan that could be the otherwise they did not have raised uh, this uh, thing such a big force and they have got uh, KV that is uh, track vehicles which carry troops then medium and light that is wheeled vehicles which can cruise through the coast that is how they will do it it will have already china has got carrier uh, things uh, aircraft carriers two or the uh, already uh, functional one fully and they have developed these strips islets have been converted into there have been landfills have been all these uh, disputed islets have been developed into uh, landing grounds and uh, for uh, uh, when the operation starts they can engage in warfare and not only that they have developed the southern fleet for the first time in the, in the south uh, if you see uh, there is a Hainan island there they have got the southern fleet which is probably will be operating in Indian Ocean this is how they are approaching this that each brigade has got self-contained its own uh, lift capability for operations that is both uh, the assault vehicles and helicopters uh, gunships missile capability in addition to that they are developing the uh, some something like the uh, missile corvettes which are uh, for missile warfare both offensive and defensive warfare this is broadly i am giving the contour of their concept because china is uh, actually has to get out of south china sea that is their objective there is americans have got first island chain and second island chain in the north and south where americans have got the dominance that is if you see okinawa guam that is why china has gone for uh, solomon islands you might have seen the report yes sir so this Okinawa and Guam, they, they will be focus points from where American offensive can be supported. Their allies are South Korea and Japan and Taiwan too. So it is a very big uh, they are uh, Chinese are hemmed in by this. That is why they are going for 
Solomon Island. Uh, because there are a chain of islands, Second World War, they became very important. Battle of Godal Canal, which is uh, in Solomon uh, group. Even these uh, Second World War was fought for dominance of Pacific, Western Pacific. Only Japan and uh, uh, US were clashing. So, they have to overcome the choke points. That is, there are three choke points. If you see the map, one is the uh, off the Andaman coast. Andaman is very, has got a very dominant role in the Bay of Bengal defense. For India, it is the uh, what you call vanguard of our defense. Vanguard is the front uh, front line troops, main guard and the rear guard. That's how the uh, defenses, defense or offenses plan. So it is that islands become a vanguard because the, the eighty percent of the ships pass through the, the Andamans, the sea lanes of Andamans. I am not using the nautical terms because without a map, it will be of no use. So, the, that is why we have got an integrated command in uh, Andamans. And we want to develop in the southern part is Nicobar, Actually, Andaman is about, uh, I think, uh, 375 island groups. And similarly, yes. also. so yes. the uninhabited islands are there. So there, there has to be surveillance. So there has to be a capability. Periodically, the Coast Guard will also be operating to ensure that these uh, things are not occupied and constant surveillance will be there. And how it is integrated in India's overall picture is a key question. Yeah. So, so yes, sir. So you have uh, given us a little explanation again. And uh, I'm glad that you have mentioned about uh, China because my next question was about China. So, sir, there have been reports that uh, China is building a hundred strong marine, uh, marine corps and they're also planning to increase their uh, amphibious assault troops by 400 percent. So do you think this is something which their neighbors have to worry about? And if at all these small, small islands like... No, no, one, one more, uh, pardon me. Uh, yes, sir. Can you just repeat the question patiently? Yes, sir. So basically, uh, there have been reports stating that uh, China has building a strong 100,000 marine corps and they have also planning to increase their assault, amphibious assault troops by 400%. So do you think this is something their neighbors have to worry about? Uh, or if at all, if there is an attack, or if, or if, there is the, if at all there is an assault from China, do you think the current capacities of their neighbors have the, have the ability to throttle it? So what is your take on this, sir? Uh, the, whether China has the capability. You are asking. No, sir, I'm, I'm, I'm talking Indian about Ocean. neighbors. No, no. Yeah, in the Indian Ocean, particularly. Uh, our neighbors, will they be used by China? You are asking. Yes, sir. And what is their current capacity? Is about. Uh, they, 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 I, I'm unable to understand. You see, there are, we have got on uh, the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean in the south. Okay. So their the threats are quite different. On the Arabian Sea, China is developing bases in Djibouti in uh, already in it is got a strong foothold in Pakistan. And yes, sir. It has got a foothold in Africa also, uh, two or three footholds. 
and on the uh, southern islands also. But in Sri Lanka, it has got more than, it is not only for military operations. It is, I told you, for hybrid warfare, you require listening post. You must be able to influence the trade, cut off the trade. So it is developing uh, multi-level things. It is not only amphibious capability. China will never be able to do much. You, you see, just by building ships and training guys for one and a half years, you don't achieve the capability. Whereas the uh, Royal Navy might be small, but their Marines have uh, evolved theories over uh, years of warfare. Similarly, US Marines. Similarly, the, the, the French Navy has got its own concepts. Uh, the, so, what China is trying to do is, it is connected with the, uh, it is a BRA initiative, Belt and Road Initiative, which is a strategic infrastructural project, which is supposed to benefit the host nation, while it will expand China's strategic reach and China's trade. So China will have a legitimate reason for keeping their troops. Okay. This is what, this is what they are trying to do in Solomon Island is a good miniature example. In Sri Lanka, let us say, if there is a threat uh, of civil war or something like that, China can bring its uh, troops and say we are protecting our assets. That is the okay, port city where they have invested and the, that is uh, in Colombo port city and in uh, Hampantota where they have got a base. So they can bring it legitimately. This is an, in Gwadar they are already doing it. Then, uh, uh, the CPEC, that is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, along the communication line they are developing, they have brought troops, the engineer troops and others in the northern part. So China is, I told you, it is doing, waging a hybrid warfare. And also there is a, a one part of BRI initiative is the 20th century uh, maritime road that is there recreating Admiral Zen Hayes uh, 12th century uh, dream when he cruised through Indian Ocean. He established foothold in Sri Lanka, signed treaties, he went up to Africa. So the Chinese dream of Xi is this. That is why from 2013 onwards, he has been promoting. Now in 2022, this year, he is likely to be elected lifetime president. Uh, that is, yes, and yes, on sir. par with Chairman Mao. Right now they are discussing. This is how we should, I am giving a strategic view. I am not really giving an amphibious warfare perspective only. But I believe okay. you should see every warfare on a strategic perspective. Because I told you, now warfare is a hybrid warfare. Actually, Cold War, it is 2.0 is already on. Okay, okay. Uh, that's how I will see it. Okay, sir. So, yes, sir, I've got an answer for my question. So yes, sir. So I think so, my time so, is here. So it's fine, sir. It's totally fine. So actually, so so you have come to the uh, end of the interview. So thank you very much, sir. It was truly a privilege to interview you on behalf of very C3S nice. on the topic uh, amphibious warfare. Uh, we are looking forward to interview mm -hmm. you on more such occasions. Uh, once again, thank you very much on behalf of C3S.
and i would like to take this moment to thank team c3s for giving me this opportunity and also helping me to conduct this interview lastly i would also like to thank all the viewers who are watching this uh, interview so thank you very much sir